In this lesson, you will learn why parsers are important. You will also learn about parser terminology as well as types of logs. After completing this lesson, you should be able to achieve the objective shown on this slide. FortisM uses an XML-based parser framework to parse events, which means teach the system to understand the incoming data. FortisM includes more than 200 out-of-box parsers, known as system parsers. These are some examples of what a parser does to the log data. Recognizes the type of device or application that sends the data and identifies which parser to use. Extracts and stores data from specific fields in the log source, source IP, source port, malware name, file name, and so on as attributes. Maps each incoming log to an event type. If no parser exists for an incoming log, FortisM stores the information but doesn't understand how to interpret the data. Therefore, FortisM creates what is called an unknown event. For example, if you have a surveillance system that supports syslog messages and it sends log data to FortisM, FortisM will still store the data, but it does not have a parser for that surveillance system to understand data. That's why the logs will be classified as unknown event type in FortisM. Remember, you are still storing the data, so you can still query these events using the raw event log attribute. Fortis imparses incoming data and performs normalization, categorization, and enrichment before the data is stored. For each received event, the parsing engine takes the raw message, extracts everything it can from it, and creates a normalized structured data event from it. The example shown on the slide reminds the terminology used for each stage of the parsing normalization and categorization process. The original log message that will be sent to FortisM is known as raw event log. You will parse each message into an event type first, and then parse various fields known as event attributes. In the last stage of the parsing process, in the CMDB, there are various classification for these events. You will send raw log messages to FortisM. You are going to map event types, parse various fields from the raw log messages, and then add those events to the CMDB. This slide shows an example of how you will view the data in FortisM. A raw log message is sent in, and you can view this in the Before Parsing section. If FortisM has a parser to understand this type of raw log message, then the data will be parsed. Otherwise, it will be classified as an unknown event. In the case FortisM has a parser for this device or application, in the After Parsing section, you can view that the parsing engine determines what event type is created and what fields are extracted into attributes. Not all the fields are processed by the parser. For example, count field is automatically processed by FortisM system. Most of the fields are processed and extracted by the parser from the raw log message. Why are parsers important? When a log source has a parser, then various events can be understood and information extracted into attributes, which can then be used in rules, reports, queries, and dashboards. Data stored within attributes is faster and easier to query. Data that has been stored as attributes is automatically cross-correlated to all other devices or application data that are writing to the same attributes. If you create a parser, you can teach the system to understand unsupported devices or applications. In FortisM terms, these are known as custom parsers. The same XML logic is used for system and custom parsers. There is no secret to it. You can modify system or custom parsers to extract extra information out of log sources by adding or modifying XML code. You can define a parser in the GUI section shown on the slide. You can view all the built-in system parsers in this section. If you are using the multi-tenant edition of FortisM, you can create parsers only in the super global view. These will be applied to all customers. This slide shows the steps to create a parser. Determine how the logs will get from your application or device to FortisM. Determine what particular logs you want to parse, events that are important for you to monitor. Determine what attributes, also known as event attribute types, need to be extracted based on the events you are going to parse. Then create any attributes that do not already exist. 
Try to reuse existing attributes. Create the device or application you wish to parse. Create the parser. Deploy, validate, test, and then activate the parser. Create and categorize the event types in the CMDB. For the custom parser functionality, Fortisim expects to receive data by one of the following protocols. Syslog on the default ports of UDP 514 or TCP 1470. Syslog TLS on the default port of TCP 6514. SNMP trap on the default port of UDP 162. Fortisim has other custom data source capabilities such as custom WMI, SNMP, JDBC, JMX, and custom command output, but these are not specifically used by the parser feature. The first step is to understand your logs. It is best practice to send a sample of events to Fortisim from your new device or application. These will initially be seen as unknown events in the analytics. After you have a sample, you can search for the events and then export this data as a CSV file. By examining the logs after they have come into Fortisim, to understand the syslog header and any spaces, double spaces, tabs, special characters in the logs, you will know how Fortisim really sees the data. You can then also look for specific fields that you want to parse. This will greatly assist when creating your parser, as will a log reference document from the vendor. Syslog messages should follow RFC 5424 or 6587. A typical syslog header will look like the header shown on this slide, where PRI is the syslog priority defined by the device or application. The header is optional, although a lot of vendors will add this, and it could include one or both of the following. Timestamp, which is the date and time at which the message was generated. Some vendors include hostname, IP address or application name of the reporting device in the header. The MSG field will contain the actual detail being reported by the device. This slide shows a couple of syslog examples for Cisco ASA and Trend Micro devices. Logs come in many different formats and some are unstructured. Unstructured logs do not have a predefined or organized format, which means that each log entry has a unique structure. The example log entries shown on this slide are from the same device, but the entries have different structures. After the header, the rest of the message is different in all three log entries. In this case, each message has to be defined in the parser to get a match. These logs are generally the hardest to create parsers for, but Fortisim has special parser functions to deal with these types of unstructured logs. Structured logs have a predefined or organized format. The log structure is generally one of two types. Key value pair logging pattern, value list logging pattern. In the key value pair logging pattern, the data in the incoming syslog message must be formatted as key value pairs. This means key one equals value one, key two equals value two, and so on. The example syslog message shown on the slide for the key value pair logging pattern has a pattern of keys and values. For example, date is key 1 and the value for the date is value 1. Similarly, key 2 will be time and the listed value for key 2 will be value 2. The combination for the key value pair logging pattern will go on as key 1 equals value 1, key 2 equals value 2, and so on. The logs are structured in a key value pair and it is easy to create parsers for such logging patterns. Fortisim has special functions to deal with a key value logging pattern. The second common log structure format is a value list. The common event format known as CEF logs are another example of structured logs as are SNMP traps. A value list is another common structured log pattern. At first glance, it might not look like it has any structure at all, but if you look closely under the syslog header, there are some fields in the same position, so it will be value 1, value 2, and so on, and then there will be a message body, so the values will be in same position. A value list log pattern usually has a common field separator, that is a space, and for each log, unique positions for each field. 
Another pattern for a value list log structure is to use commas instead of spaces as common separator. The example shown on this slide is of radius logs, and the value list pattern is the values enclosed in quotation marks with a comma as separator. So after a syslog header, you can identify the log pattern as value 1, enclosed in quotation marks and separated by comma, value 2 enclosed in quotation marks separated by a comma, and so on. This slide shows the objectives that you covered in this lesson. By mastering the objectives covered in this lesson, you learned why parsers are important. You also learned about parser terminology as well as types of logs.